Thanks for coming back. Uh, today, what I've got on deck here is the Scout. Uh, for those of you experienced with them, you know exactly what this was before I even said it. For those of you that are new, this here um, was a locomotive that was included in so many sets. It was the introductory level type train for Lionel for years. I think it still is. I think they still have the Scout. This is my 1120. And when most of you get this particular locomotive, if you were to take out that motor, you would see this. This is actually the original motor that is out of this 1120. Uh, the one 1110 also has one of these. Uh, some of them you can take apart. Some of them you can't because they're kind of the plastic casing is welded together. Uh, I do have a video that shows how to take this apart and maintain it. But that's not what today's video is about. Today we're going to talk about what some people might find in their scouts. And it's not this. So this particular 1120, I took out that motor because I got a beautiful box of spare parts from my uncle. And in it, I found the motor from an 1130. Now the 1130 is still a 242 locomotive, two driving wheels, or two up front, four driving wheels, two in the rear, but it has an E-unit in it, if you can see it right there. And it is a much more reliable engine, it is, or a motor, it's a much stronger motor. So there is a long body pin here at the back that threads into one side of the shell, in this case this side. And then this whole assembly here, the motor has this little notch in it that actually slips in and fits right onto here. And that kind of holds it all together, as well as the, the driver arms. So to show it on the actual 1120s motor, this is where the body pin goes through, goes through the shell, through this, screws into the other side. And this is the notch that hooks up into that little front silver assembly I showed you. So what we're going to do first is we're going to back this screw out. And you can save yourself a lot of trouble and just go directly to an eyeglass screwdriver because it's a really tight fit in here. We're just going to back this out. Pop that through the back here. Get that pin out. Just slides right out. Now the assembly will come loose pretty quickly, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two screws out up here. So out it comes. Just swing it around that back bar. And out comes the motor. So this is actually the motor of an 1130 with its E-unit, which is fantastic, and the 1130 had come with a light. Now, my particular 1130, the light bracket was broken off, so I purchased this off of eBay, snapped it back in, hooked up the wire, and away we went. Everything was good. Okay, so swapping this out from this is just as easy as that, okay? So if this motor is the one that's originally in there still, you're going to take out the back body pin. You know, you undo your, your driver arms, obviously. And then this whole thing will just slide and drop out. Now this one, like some of the more higher end, uh, it has a, a, a much better plate covering the armature, more accessible to clean. And as I've shown in some other videos, um, you do the same type of cleaning. You just back off these nuts, take off the plate, expose the armature, and give it a wipe. So we'll actually go ahead and do that one right now since we've got it this far apart. And there's one. And that's it. Now this will just lift up. Okay, there's our armature. There's our brushes. All right, so this one... Could use a little bit of a cleaning. So now that you get the plate out of the way, the best thing about the 1130 motor here is you can actually lift the armature right out here. So you can work on it much, much, much easier.
Perfect. Now maybe we'll just get uh, let's get my eyeglass screwdriver here. There's really nothing in those slots, but just to make sure, just give it a little a little extra help there. Okay, we're gonna have a look at the back of this to see what kind of carbon buildup we got, and there is some there. So I'll just get my rag and just give it a bit of a wipe. You can have a look inside there. It's a little bit greasy looking in there. It's not too bad. I've seen much, much worse. But while it's out, you can take your green pad and the, I think they're magnet fields, I don't know, the silver things that are in here that the armature spins against. Uh, if one of you guys know what it's called, you can put it in the comments. While it's out, you can give them a quick little wipe too. Usually they... it okay and you can drop that back in just jiggle it around or move the wheels a bit until the gears line back up and it sits in place and away you go so now what i do like in all the other locomotives you just turn her upside down get your brushes they look nice and clean drop them back in the holder Like so. And put the whole thing back together. Okay. And here you can see that the, the tension springs aren't lined up with the slots. No big deal. Just get your screwdriver in there. Turn the brush around. And the, it'll all fall back into place. So, put these nuts back on. give it just a little twist there still see that there we go so when it seats just give it a little and then wait and you're good to go now here is the bearing plate just like all the other locomotives have so we'll get our big or small screwdriver we'll crack this one off like that that was way too tight there we go okay so there's that again we can just give it a bit of a wipe give it a bit of a wipe here get some of the excess off that it doesn't need there we go it's not too bad we can drop a little bit of we can drop a little bit of grease on there so what are we looking at here? That's getting quite a bit of a buildup on it there. So I want to get some of this excess off. Like I said in the other videos, I just try to... You don't need a whole lot of grease on there. You don't need it caked on. You don't need it so thick that all of the dog hair, cat hairs, carpet fibers, or whatever it is, uh, start to make the chassis look all fuzzy. Because that just starts gumming things up and jamming it up. And then you got problems with how it runs so we're going to put a little bit of grease on it and as i've used before just a little bit of petroleum jelly simple simple if you want to use bearing grease go right ahead and do it it's not hurting anything it's a little bit like that a little bit on this one and we can drop this back on now this also has a couple of points to help you line it up. There's a couple little raised thingy bobbers here that when you drop the shaft through the hole there, get the gears all lined up, and just give the wheels a spin, the whole thing will just seat into place. Okay, seated down, a little bit of a turn to tighten. And at this point right here, in here, you can drop a little bit of oil on there. There we go. A little shot there and a little shot there. And I always just work them in. All right, and this one, you can actually see the E-unit much clearer. And this one, this E-unit is in pretty good shape. 
I mean, it's got a little bit of, of dirt on the, the barrel, but that's not too bad. It's not really going to affect or hurt, rather, the, uh, the way this E-unit works. But if you can, get in there, give it a little wipe. You can flip it around by hand, just to the next notch. Do the same thing. You're just getting some of these black spots, if you can see them. There we go. Some of those black spots, the black marks there, you're just rubbing them off. It's just dirt. That's it. So now this is good to put back in. So, like I said, if this was the motor that you had just taken out and you're putting this one in, simple, simple reinstall. The hardest thing you have are these arms. They're the things that I always find can be a pain in the neck. So these still slide in on either side, like so. Okay, so you get that in, get the weight out of the way, and slide the whole assembly back so it sits on that clip again. And there, we've got that all back together. And we're going to drop this back into the shell, which is right here. All right. Oh, and we also forgot the rear truck. This is actually the the rear truck and drawbar for an 1130. This is the one from the Scout from the original 1110. So you can see I had to bend it down a little bit in order for it to uh, line up with the tender again. No big deal. These things can take a lot of flexing. It's not going to matter. But in this case, I have the actual rear truck. And what it does is it just hooks into here, just like that. The 1110s does the same thing. It just hooks in just like that. Hook it around the drawbar. And you don't have to worry about the E unit in this case because the lever is pointing down. So it's not protruding through the top at all. I don't want to knock those out of the way. So we just line everything back up, put your motor back in place. Okay, and we can start bolting this back in. So the original bolts for the 1110, if you don't have this weight, you just put the original ones back in, no problem, they drop, everything fits perfectly. The 1130, since it had this weight in it, takes up a lot more space, so we have to use the screws that came with it. And we're good to go. Let's get this back body pin in. And you just have to kind of look and see which side had the threads on it. It's this one here. So threads in first. And it might take a little bit of jiggling. Uh, you guys I can't really see it that well on camera here. Just to line up the holes to get this to go through the body. The screwdriver that you use to put the rear body pin in. Before you put that body pin in, you can, if the screw's thin enough, and you should try to get one that uh, that is, you can actually put the screwdriver first to help you line up all the holes before you drop this pin in. It just makes things a little bit easier. Okay, so we get that pin in. We, you have to jiggle the chassis a little bit maybe to help coax it through. And once you get it through, you can just start screwing it in from the other side here. Like so, make sure it's coming through there, and it is. And that's it. You've just replaced your very weak, underpowered Lionel 1110, 1120, plastic scout motor with a 
high performance, dare I say, 1130 E unit type motor. All right. So, uh, thanks again for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it helped. Uh, like I said, if you, if you come across a spare 1130 motor and you have a scout that you want to give a, a little bit of juice to, go ahead and give this a try. It's a lot of fun and you'll get a lot more enjoyment out of your scouts. Okay. Thanks again for watching. Please hit subscribe, hit the notification, and we'll see you on the next video.